I want to give everybody on the panel an opportunity to sort of wrap this up. I think I think we're talking about changing the world, and as I said, we go from the very little specifics to the larger uh, picture, but I think that's what's important. So I want to start with you, Richard. Final well, words you know, for us. Galvanize you know, The best advice that I got when I was starting this project actually came from, from Paul Farmer and, and Jim Kim when he was still at Partners in Health. Uh, and this was many years ago when we were just in the research phase. And they said, you, you know, when you get out in the field, the most important thing you can do is listen to the girls. Um, you know, don't come in with your own preconceptions, but really listen to them. They will tell you their stories mm -hmm. and what, they, what their goals are, what their needs are, what their dreams are, and let that really be your guidance. Um, and that was really the ethos with which we made the film. And I think it's the right ethos to sort of guide all of our work in this area, which is that the girls themselves understand the value of the education that they, they're seeking, um, and they will work harder than any of us um, to get there, but they need our help. Um, but, you know, the, the sort of core human capital um, that really is required exists there on the ground. They have it. They live it and breathe it every day. And um, so, you know, the engine exists. They just need a little help with the steering. Sound great. Oh, David, you're next. Yeah, I mean, I've worked in a lot of developing countries, and they're really no different from us. They're poorer, but I don't think there are fundamental cultural or other barriers that are holding them back. And I think the, the road to success here really is through, I think, investments in uh, early childhood health and in education. It's building the human capital. That's what's going to lead to long-term success. Perfect. Donna. So I think a role that you know anybody who's watching or everyone in the audience can can play is to is to exactly help um, galvanize the resources. Whether it's taking uh, an action to make sure that U.S. resources are you know continually channeled to good international causes, what, which is you know education for everyone. You know everyone's if you're a U.S. citizen has a congressman they can they can write and and you know say you care about this issue. And there's lots of great organizations, including our own, that that are involved in these activities. And I think just really quickly, the other thing to be looking at, though, is where this money is going. And then, and as David referred to, I mean, the public system is something that we really need to help strengthen in these countries. We're doing it in the health sector, but we also need to be aware that, that yes, giving donation to a small school, private school, is going to help the girls in that school. But I think we need to be looking at the bigger infrastructure issues and really trying to strengthen the public education systems in these countries. Great. Alicia. Um, well, I have to say, Richard, I watched this film with my two boys, who are 12 and 14, and both of them were incredibly moved by it. Um, both of them thought, well, you know, we didn't know about this before, and a lot of people don't know, but once you know about it, you have to do something about it. And they felt the need to mobilize and share the film with their friends, and I think that that speaks to the power of the film. And my older son, my 14-year-old son, said, you know, Mom, I really think that, that progress in the world, that countries should be judged on the way they treat their girls. Yeah. And <laughs> if we can get that across, I think we'll be making progress. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. Don't. Jack. Well, I agree with all these comments. I, I would say that um, at one level, the problem is daunting. It's vast. It's multifaceted. And it requires the intervention of government. It requires the massive mobilization or change of direction of resources. But on another level, I do feel, as people have said, that all of us have a role to play because Political resources, political will, do depend on public opinion. Whether it's to do with the consumer goods we buy, and whether it's you know asking when you buy something whether it was made in a sweatshop, or commenting that this is, is sweatshop free as being a positive aspect, so that this gets gets fed back, or whether it's making contributions, or whether it's writing, uh, whether it's in our classrooms. I, I think that each of us does have a role to play, and I think that just like we have managed to really make an impact on certain seemingly impossible challenges like HIV AIDS um, because there was 
sufficient political will, sufficient skills, sufficient resources, and because of several very powerful constituencies really uh, were affected. So I think we can make an, is uh, an issue of this, but we have to make the point that this is as much of an emergency, this is as much of a global priority, and we need to do that together, I think.